What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It is the Earth Master on this beautiful Sunday end of the weekend. Unfortunately, May 8th, 2022 is the date about 11.40 a.m. here along the uh, west coast in California. Latest quake, a 2.1 earthquake into the area of Southern California. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here across the globe, across the map. Seen some activity really ramping up here along the Puerto Rico Trench just south of there around the British Virgin Islands north of uh, the USGS has this listed a 5.5 earthquake uh, 84 kilometers north northeast of the Cruise Bay uh, US Virgin Islands area so uh, a little bit of movement kicking up here about 25 kilometer deep earthquake uh, we have noted that things kind of uh, at least over the last couple days had been tapering off quite a bit at least around the Puerto Rico area which that looks a to be about the same here as far as the swarming goes but we are noticing a little bit of broader movement outside there and specifically right around the Puerto Rico trench area so uh, watching that movement uh, pretty closely like I said that 5.5 kicking off uh, earlier this morning some movement also over here around the Costa Rica area and also off the coast of Nicaragua Ragua, uh, there into the uh, middle America trench southern portion it looks like uh, but although that activity here that you see on the map was from last night, uh, earlier last night. Uh, so far as recent activity goes, South America uh, did see some activity into the Peru Chile Trench once again with a pair of 4.2s. Some, uh, one of those pretty deep at 231 kilometers deep into the trench area. Um, nothing going on around the South Sandwich Islands area. The Atlantic Ocean looks pretty clear. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the states real quick. Also, notice the red circle here on the map, 5.0 in the uh, New Caledonia area. That one uh, relatively shallow at uh, 10 kilometers. Let's go ahead and stick to the states currently, where there is not a whole lot of significant movement up here in the Pacific Northwest. I uh, got one earthquake here outside of the Tri Cities area in Washington, a 1.2 at uh, 5.6 kilometers. Low activity up in Idaho as well, around the Sawtooth Fault System. Northern California, pretty quiet. Nothing being listed here on the map. And uh, aside from uh, aside from this geyser uh, activity here in the geothermal field, around Cobb Mountain continues to uh, produce quite a bit of quakes here over the last 24 hours. Uh, a little bit of activity around the Bay Area, north of Antioch, 2.0. This one here, I'm not for sure which fault system this is on here. Kind of inland into the Delta region pretty significantly. Uh, looks like the uh, Vaca Fault Zone uh, sits to the west by about 20 miles, but I'm not 100% not certain which one this uh, occurred on there. Uh, Bay Area, aside from that, looks pretty quiet. Low activity north of San Jose on the Calaveras Fault System. And uh, a little bit of activity on the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault today. Ridgecrest, um, man, calm. Aside from these little two earthquakes within the last hour, you take those out, and we'd only be looking at three over the last 24 hours. So it's a little, little, uh, really quiet. Even with the red, even with these recent quakes here, five quakes, uh, pretty quiet. Uh, Garlock Fault structure looks pretty clear for now. The uh, southern part of the state um, a little bit of activity around the san jacinto fault zone and over here on the uh towards the cottonwood mountains a couple small microquakes there but generally speaking uh the west coast eerily quiet there's always movement but this is definitely uh on the quiet side looking up here into oklahoma area uh, just outside of medford we're seeing some further swarm well a little earthquake activity in this region where we've seen that swarm kick off here uh, over the last 30 days uh, maybe there's up north here it looks like that was just up north uh, but i know we've had quite a bit of movement here in this area over the last couple months this is a 30-day map uh, of all magnitudes um, but it's out there in the uh in the gas and oil fields we've got gas and oil fields all over the place up here and uh, we can go ahead and check out the satellite view real quick and see the and confirm that there is indeed some pumping operations out here in these little square uh, boxes this might be it's hard to tell with this it's got some trees and stuff uh, these look like maybe some farm houses out there uh, but the broader view definitely some pumping operations within the vicinity of where this earthquake uh, activity is kicking up 
Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Backing out of here. A little bit of movement outside of Quinton area uh, in the Oklahoma area. A couple twos kicking off there. Let's see what else we got. Eastern part of the seaboard looks pretty quiet. Uh, let's see. Let's go up north here around the Alaska area. Still noticing a swarm of movement here into the Gulf of Alaska right around uh, a couple of specific fault systems here. A little scattered activity. No, no one defined area. It's kind of just a um, little broad area of uh, some some deep and some shallow microquakes up there in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, also some movement up in the mainland area and along the Aleutian Trench, but no significant movement to report. Now take a look at this, folks. This is pretty quiet here. Uh, not too often do you see the entire section here of the Pacific Plate this quiet in terms of 4.0 and above. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model real quick and see what these guys are reporting looks like uh looks like there was a one pointer or a four pointer that one's pretty old though that may be past the 24 hour period uh, but definitely um uh, let's go ahead and zoom in see what we got for any any uh smaller quakes here in the area looks like maybe one to 3.9 but still this whole area very quiet along the Mariana Trench and the uh, Japan Curl, the Japan Trench and the Curl Kamchaka Trench northward there. So, uh, still seeing some activity into the Philippine Trench, the southern and southwestern portion, I should say. Uh, they're seeing a little swarm of activity still, uh, following all that movement last week up in that region. Although, starting to notice a little bit of. Uh, let's go back to the 30-day map here. Of course, you, if you remember, we had a couple sixes up here. Uh, over the last 30 days, actually within the last couple weeks, these uh, sequence of quakes took place. And uh, now it looks like this migration uh, of swarming has kind of dropped down here to this area. Got uh, quite a few earthquakes in the 4 and 5 range and at uh, some pretty deep levels as well. Uh, so definitely still a lot of heightened pressure here along the Philippine plate. And uh, it kind of looks like we're getting an unzipping feature Kind of see swarms start up here, swarms down there, and then all of a sudden swarms back down here. So um, I'd say we definitely got to watch this area. I know uh, this region is a very complex area around the Banda Sea northward. It's very complex in terms of the uh, of the dynamics of the plates. You can see the plates being pulled apart here, and uh, definitely got some interesting features out there on the map. Uh, let's see. Oh, Go ahead and look at that earthquake that just struck within the last hour of 5.0. Like I mentioned, Kermadec Trench and the Tonga Trench all extremely quiet for now. Uh, one earthquake up in the China area with 4.7. That one from uh, looks like from yesterday. And a little activity outside of Greece and the Crete area with 4.7 and a 4.6. And there's also a 4.3 hidden in there somewhere underneath this one. But overall, no major significant movement to report in that area. Yellowstone National Park, about the same. Not uh, seeing any major activity. We did note a little bit of swarming, not mentioned here on the USGS map, uh, over here on the northwest corner of the park within the last, eh, probably within the last three to four hours, it looks like. Seen a couple handful of quakes. These are probably looking at the magnitudes here on the map. They're definitely showing up across... Uh, a good portion of the park. Maple Creek area looks to be the uh, epicenter of this activity. Looks like uh, definitely under 2.0, but I would say those are probably some one mid 1.5 range, maybe a little bit higher, uh, just due to the fact that they're kind of showing up bro uh, broadly across the, uh, this area of the park. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, swarms can start just like that and then they can just have a handful of quakes and just uh, die away so we'll watch that pretty closely uh, tremor map from last night uh, showed about 15 epicenters once again into the southern end of the Cascadia that'd be northern California area uh, let's see volcanic activity here around Mount St. Helens it's an area we've been watching for some swarming and uh, we'll double check that and make sure we ain't got no uh, uh, major movement to report Let's see what they have 
Actually got some colder temperatures coming into California today, folks. Pretty nice. I had to close up the windows and I mean, I like, I like the breeze, but when the kids are around, kind of don't want the house super cold. We've got to keep it warm for the, for the little ones. Uh, a little earthquake activity here. Uh, a couple small little specks, nothing significant though overnight. Just looks like about one uh, noticeable, maybe one or two noticeable quakes. And the uh, previous day here, eh, kind of dying down a little bit. It looks like we had about the same. Some of these little tiny ones are super, super micro quakes. But uh, overall, no major swarming to report there at the uh, Mount St. Helens area in Washington for now, right? For now is the key word. We got a couple developing sunspots uh, coming around the bend. Of course, this is kind of a little peak here, rear side of the sun. Uh, going to be within this line area uh, to the right so we got a little little view of some fellow sunspots here popping up this one here might be something to watch pretty closely that's going to be uh, definitely earth directed once this thing comes into the into the uh, view earth side um, far as potential flaring goes right now uh, looks like we did have another c flare overnight looks like a c point uh, c4.1 uh, so a little bit of cracking, but right now we're still underneath that threshold of the sea flare activity and the sunspots that are currently facing Earth are not uh, super complex here in terms of creating that spark that we look for in the uh, solar flare department. But a couple, definitely a couple notable uh, sunspots around the bend, so it's not completely dead. We definitely got some activity that we'll be looking at uh, over the following week as that uh, once again comes into view. Uh, no major geomagnetic storming to report. These guys still showing a possibility of an X flare. I just don't think they've got to the map yet as um, far as uh, updating their, their um, solar flare threat and their probabilities. But uh, it is what it is. Aside from that, folks, I'm gonna bounce out of here. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend. Got a chance of maybe some thunderstorms here in California. I'm kind of watching the map pretty closely, uh, at least a radar map, and uh, seeing what possibly could come in. So we've got a 3.9 right there right now again. Uh, looks like that's north of the Philippine Plate, just to the north, uh, just off the coast of Japan. So uh, that one about 50 kilometers. Still quite a bit of pressure though, watching all these swarms and movement. Uh, even though it's quiet, uh, I kind of broke the silence, didn't it? 3.9. So we'll watch it. Uh, if anything does pop off, any larger, we'll definitely do an update out here and uh, jump on the live stream. Have a good day, folks. Uh, we will chat at you guys a little bit later. Peace out.